Now, what's interesting between xenograft and allografts is that... The question that comes up is, in a lot of cases, we need bone augmentation. So what, in your opinion, is the best material to use? Is there a gold standard, let's say, that you go to? Is it depending on the case? How do you make these decisions when coming up with the different materials to use and, and bone grafting techniques to utilize? The materials used for bone grafting, you talk about a gold standard, I think we all understand that the gold standard is autologous bone, and that is bone taken from some part of your body that you're using that you graft into an area. Having said that, not everybody wants to harvest bone from one part of the body to another, and therefore we're left with different types of solutions other than what we call autologous products. It leaves us with synthetic materials that are created in a laboratory, xenograft materials, which is materials from another species other than man, or allographic products, which are same species, another is another human being that has been modified in a laboratory uh, that can be used for uh, grafting in places and not develop a, an allergic response by the host that's receiving the material. Much of this comes down to biology. And if I have a choice that I want a product that's going to yield maximum number of viable bone cells in my surgical environment in the area where I've grafted bone, so if it happens to be around an implant, I'd like to have the maximum number of viable bone cells mm -hmm. around that implant. Now, what's interesting between xenograft and allografts is that xenograft, coming from a different species, tends to retain a lot of its original hydroxyl apatite material within the bone graft itself. And the actual amount and volume of viable bone cells is reduced compared to allograft. Therefore, on a one-to-one -one basis, allograft becomes my preference. Having said that, there are protocols whereby xenograft material are well placed, particularly if you put an allograft in place and then layer it with a xenograft material and a barrier, it reduces the opportunity for soft tissue to come in and compete and therefore it can be used as a barrier to protect the allograft to get the maximum amount of bone retention. So there are a lot of varieties of usage of xenograft. Now, what I will point out is that many years ago when we were talking about um, sinus grafts, for example, Sinus grafts, originally when we were doing it, we were using, a, it was a, actually a microporous hydroxyl apatoid synthetic material. And when we placed this and we placed it in small dimensions and packed a sinus graft with it, it took us eight months before we can go and put an implant in and the bone quality was really, really not that good. We increased the particle size, it's still a synthetic material and we got a better result. When it, we went is to, that what's an alloplast? That was an alloplast, alloplast correct, yeah. a synthetic. Then we went to a xenograft material and we found that we got an improvement again in the amount of bone that was generated in a shorter period of time. You could place implants even sooner. When we went to allograft, it became even better and stronger with a better quality of mm -hmm. bone. So much of it has to do with your application, what you're trying to do biologically, and that's the key principle in determining whether you're going to use an allograft or a xenograft. In most cases, though, I will choose an allograft over a xenograft. Mm -hmm.